Mm -hmm. But, but uh, Alyssa, as you know, but this is actually, this, that's actually a great point, I think one that's important for people watching this to understand. Machine guns are functionally illegal right now. Welcome back to Andrew Says, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. Alyssa Milano and her team met with Ted Cruz recently to talk about gun control. And it was one of the poorest showings I've seen in a very long time. One man she brought with her was a father of a victim in one of the Florida uh, incidents, we'll call them, to try to stay off the radar of YouTube. I'm not sure who the other guy was, but he was slightly more educated on the matter. Now, while I commend Alyssa Milano for someone so adamant about the issue, she didn't seem to know a heck of a lot, of, a lot about it, unfortunately, I have to say. She's always on Twitter talking about it. She's saying that something has to be done. She doesn't know that much about it, and even she didn't really present any proposals. And I know the the title says "School Ted Cruz Schools Them," and I I really didn't want to be that hyperbolic because I encourage the discussion that's going on here. But Ted Cruz literally had to educate them the entire time. It was kind of sad to watch. It was kind of it, it was like in the Terminator when John Connor's like, "You can't just go around killing people." Well, it was like. Ted Cruz being like, you can't just go around making up these laws and taking people's guns and because they're based on really nothing. And they're just like, why? Well, universal background checks are already there. And why? Well, you know, machine guns are already legal. Why? It just kept going on and on like that. So they started off with 10 minutes worth of emotional pleas to Ted Cruz, the man talking about how his child died and uh, describing how, I guess, Twitter and the left sees Ted Cruz as being some evil, gun-toting caricature of a villain. And now I've watched several Ted Cruz debates where he wipes the floor with Bernie Sanders quite easily. I've seen his content on Twitter occasionally. And even if you disagree with him, he's never come across as a monster or a bad person whatsoever. In fact, it's the opposite. He comes off very kind and respectful. So it shows me that Liz Milano is obviously way too wrapped up in the Twitterverse Twitter land and the media to be objective on this subject. She's in her own echo chamber and she's being told what she wants to hear. And the way that they talk about these issues certainly shows it, at least for me, where I'm coming from. And that's just somebody who wants a reasonable debate and discussion to be had. Now, this narrative that they also present, that in the United States, you must always be afraid because there's guns. And yes, it sucks. I don't live there. It sucks that this stuff happens. But it's a big country and the idea that ar-15s are especially dangerous is to an, an outside an outsider looking in it's concocted outrage it's like why are you focusing on one thing it's obviously to push a gun control and confiscation uh platform forward because if you know things anything about guns then there's nothing that's special about an ar-15 other than the fact that it's it's uh it's something that's popular it's a practical gun it's popular. It's not, uh, it's not especially dangerous compared to other guns. Now, a few years ago, I would have agreed that it sounds crazy, just like socialism and communism, right? the ideals that have followed it. It sounds crazy to suggest that gun grabbing is a real thing, but it turns out when the Democrats' backs are against the wall and Trump exposes them, or whomever you want to say is exposing them and puts them uh, their feet to the fire, They've made a de desperate attempt to take over, and they've pushed now, as Democratic presidential candidates a year out, a little more than a year out, full gun control, full socialism and communism by way of the Green New Deal. They all have slowly just, you know, piled on to the most radical <laughs> ideas they have on their side. So here's a few clips. Here's the father talking about how, and this is a tragedy, and I hate that I have to like correct somebody on this, but this is the reality of it. Here's the father talking about how only an AR-15 could have done the damage that it did. She's running down the hallway. He was mid-hallway, she made it to the stairwell. She was turning into the stairwell, you saw the picture. One more second, my daughter is alive today. Boom! A single shot severed her spinal cord. No other weapon could have done that, this one did. A single shot. So when I, talk to people about gun safety. For me, it's not some make-believe argument over Second Amendment, a bastardized interpretation, okay? And that is what goes on. Of course, that's not true. 
a nasty fall, a high caliber pistol, shotgun, stuff like that, even just different rifles with different calibers. This shows you that he's speaking from emotion and probably shouldn't be having this debate, as a lot of the comments in the Facebook video say. say and you can find that link in the description. And while I'm pointing down, you can also donate, donate to me on Patreon across the screen here because YouTube doesn't pay me and you guys all love me. But on the Facebook page where this video was originally posted, you see people saying he's too emotionally invested in this and he can't have a coherent argument because it's all coming from emotion. He shouldn't be having this debate, and I agree. Now, the next few clips I'm going to show you, I'm talking about gun confiscation in the registry. Now, the group Milano is brought with her, thinks it's rid it's ridiculous talking points for Ted Cruz to suggest that uh, people are want to confiscate guns and uh, make a gun registry, even though that's several of the candidates' platforms as we speak. Over the last couple of weeks, they've mentioned this, and somehow they don't know this. You're a gun owner, right? I am. Okay. Can you pass a background check? Yes. You ever beat your wife? No. Okay. Nobody's trying to take your guns. So the notion that people are is nonsense. The notion of being murders. I believe the much more effective way is focus on the bad guys rather than law-abiding citizens. And I think gun confiscation is a perfect example of a policy that targets law-abiding right citizens error. rather than... It's a right error. It's what they're campaigning on. Well, hang on. But but America can get to vote, but right now we're talking about HRA and extreme risk protection laws. Well, let me step back for just one second. I just think so that we're talking all in the same terms here. No presidential candidate that I'm aware of is saying they're going to confiscate your pistol. Or they're going to confiscate your bolt action rifle. Or they're going to confiscate your semi automatic non assault rifle, right? There are some That's candidates who are talking about removing a particular subclass of weapons. Nobody is saying we're going to come and take your guns. They're saying we may come and take some of your guns. In the same way, at one point, they said we're going to come and take your machine gun, or we're going to come and take your hand grenades. Or we're going to get rid of having Sudafin, right? <laughs> there are or reduce the amount of Sudafin you can have. So no, nobody is saying we're going to come and take your guns. And I we think don't want to take important. all guns away from right. all people. We want to take certain guns away from certain people. And I think this just goes back a little bit to what Fred was saying earlier about honesty in the debate, right? And what you were saying about the caricature, right? So we have the caricature of gun grabbers on our side. And you have the caricature of aren't everybody all of the time on your side. And neither of those are accurate. But when we use language like presidential candidates want to confiscate your guns, we are telling half of the truth at best. And we are sticking in those, those that ping pong of talking points. And that's not helpful for any of us, right? Three of the 10 remaining presidential candidates on the debate stage are actively campaigning on the federal government, actively and forcibly confiscating what is the most popular rifle in America today. Now, you may agree with that policy, that's, that's, but that is gun confiscation. But it's, it's not, it's not but, but why people are genuinely concerned. Because if you mandate when a grandfather gives a shotgun to his grandson, it has to have a background check, or when a buddy in a deer stand sells, it sells a gun to a deer stand. The next step to enforce it, many people fear, is a gun registry. That the only way you can know if someone sold, sells a person-to-person -person gun is to register them. And a gun registry is how gun confiscation is carried out. And, and, and I'll point out, three years ago, if I said Democrats are pushing gun registration, and I don't mean you, sir, I mean elected Democrats in Congress. The fact that you're coming to meet a senator to talk about gun laws and gun violence and things of that nature, that's another Arnold line, by the way, things of that nature, Things, things like this, the governor of California and things of that nature. The fact that you come to talk with this and you don't even know what's on the table right now. You don't even know what the Democrats who, I think it's pretty obvious they support. They don't know where the current conversations are. They should tell you that they aren't very well informed. They're, they're just listening to their Twitter replies. Nobody's trying to come for your guns. It, it, it's, it's sad to watch. Ted Cruz had to sit there and listen to Consistent emotional pleas. Can't we do something, Mr. Cruz? Why don't we? Do, why don't you just want to try it? Why don't you want to just try taking away uh, the freedoms of people? Is to sit there and listen respectfully, and he did. Inform them of the laws, the realities of the events themselves. Some of them they didn't even know the the stories behind, and the platforms of those talking about gun control, as if they're children in a classroom. 
he has to teach them about all these things, and they still brush over it. They still as, act, as, act as if they have ultimate knowledge on the subject. Now, they don't, they aren't rude about it, but you can tell they're just, at many points, they're saying, like, well, that doesn't matter. He calls one thing a red herring, and they say, why can't we just try all these things? Cruz tells them that the, most people die from handguns and gun violence. They brush over it. Cruz says person-to-person -person background checks wouldn't have stopped any of the mass shootings. They brush over that, too. And then halfway through, they talk about how the guy on the left talks about how this isn't actually all about mass murders. Then why did you spend the first 10 minutes talking about how this is what we need to stop? They shift the goalpost several times when they realize that they're not really informed. It's 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 very adolescent of them to just it's like when I used to my one of my brothers is seven years older than me. And when I was a teenager, I would try to debate with him and he would say you lose on one topic, now you're just moving on to the next. And that's this is what happens when you're not this uh, very informed on one topic. You just jump and jump around, jump up, jump up, and get down because you're just so sure that you're correct, but you don't want to give up any, any leeway because of your ego. But what I don't understand is how you can be so invested in this topic and not know anything about it. If I was th that same... A fourteen-year-old or whatever, and I was arguing about video games. At least I knew about that, right? They mean well, but they're so emotionally invested, and they want immediate answers. They can't see that they're being illogical and irrational. It was shockingly bad, and it shouldn't be surprising that this is what you get when you just get confirm confirmation of your bias when you're virtue signaling on Twitter. And it's so sad to say, and I don't want to be mean to Alyssa because she seemed nice, but that's the way it is. You see her screeching out there in the Twitterverse, and in her circles and she gets confirmation that she's being correct and if you're getting told told how great you are all the time it's hard to believe that you could be wrong about something but when something that's based on factual evidence there's got to be there's got to be something in there if, if i'm sitting on my computer and i'm talking about like nutrition for example i know the basics of nutrition and if I'm saying all this stuff, all the, making all these claims, and people are telling me I'm right, I might think that I'm a genius in the field of nutrition. And then I go and talk to a nutritionist or somebody else. See, I don't even know the names of these people. A dietitian, see? Then I'll probably get schooled on the breakdowns of amino acids and crap like that. I don't know. But that's just an example. Like, you get fed that you're a genius, and you might start to believe it. But I still expected far better than what I got here of this hour and a half of tomfoolery, we'll call it. Now, at one point, Alyssa Milano, for some reason, brings up a quote, because Ted Cruz brings out a sheet that talks about defensive gun uses, which is somewhere between half a million and three million times per year, which is from the CDC. It's kind of old, but it's one of the only things we have. We, the deep state has it. But for some reason to counteract this, she says, you have your sheet here, but I want to read you something. And she presents a quote from Ronald Reagan, and it goes a little something like this. In taking away the right of the citizen for sporting, for hunting, and so forth, or for home defense. But I do believe that a machine gun, an AK-47, is not a sporting weapon or needed for defense of a home. Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, Alyssa, as you know, but this is actually this that's actually a great point. I think one that's important for people watching us to understand. Machine guns are functionally illegal right now. So to me, that shows that she didn't even she's here and she didn't even know that machine guns were illegal. You have your piece of information on a sheet, Mr. Cruz. Well, I brought mine. Did you know that machine guns are bad? Like, come on. Now, what I'd like to close with is that I think Alyssa Milano is a nice person. I think she's doing this for reasons, I guess, out of love, out of caring, and I commend her for it. And a lot of people in politics wouldn't do this. AOC is not coming to debate Ted Cruz. Uh, Eohan Omar is not coming to debate Ted Cruz. Even Bernie Sanders did, and he got crushed, okay? So commend her for doing this. They were reasonable. They were kind. Nobody screamed. But I would urge her to get out of the echo chamber. It's killing her. It's shocking. You can shocking to me. You can be so invested in something and know so little about it. It was honestly like angry high schoolers versus a teacher, and then he has to slowly talk them down and be the more adult about it. And once again, it just goes to show you that those who are preaching the loudest and the angriest and claiming to be the most tolerant and the most caring 
are often the ones who are the least informed.